Ladies and gentlemen, this is the very first Howard's Build Guide. Today, we are building a mini ITX gaming machine. Gaming powerhouse is gonna like, you know, power through all the walls and like break through all the roofs and all that stuff. So, yeah, this build will be featuring this random 500 watt anti power supply that I didn't review. And this old Zotac GTX 650 graphics card, which is really weird because it's got no like additional power cables needed. So it's a weird card, but hey, still performs pretty well. Oh, fuck. I mean, oh, shoot. Good save, Howie. Ah, uh, and a Patriot Blaze, 60 gigabyte SSD, he has a boot drive. You also have the Intel Pentium G3258 Anniversary Edition, which means it's unlocked, give you overclock, and Putting all of that in, on top, in, in, the Gigabyte Z97N Wi-Fi with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And we're going to put everything inside this tiny weenie. That's what she said. Mini ITX Cooler Master Elite 130. So, let's begin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, what you need is a anti-static strap so that you don't zap all of your components when you're building them and a screwdriver that's literally all you need let's start building so let's start with the cpu and ram install so let's crack open our motherboard and always remember that your motherboard case is a perfect place to work on as a anti-static mat kind of thing because you know if you can't afford an anti-static mat like me you can't afford it what i was trying to say was that your motherboard box is actually an anti-static yeah. mat remember, um, that you can work on so if you can't afford a mat uh just use your box and um yeah just stuff you don't use it. It's free. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's go. Okay. First of all, remember to wear an anti-static strap because your CPU is a really delicate part of hardware and probably the most expensive for your build. But this is not. So you still have to be careful because. Your CPU messes up, your PC doesn't work. Okay, so on the motherboard socket or on the cover, you can see that there is a corner right here. So what you need to do is, well, it was like this before. So you pull it out, release the tension strap, pull back the tab. Okay, don't remove the plastic part as that will eventually pop off when you put down the CPU. So, remember how this one had a corner on it? On the cover, in this corner. And you see that there is also a little corner on the CPU. This means that the CPU goes in like this. Be careful. Just drop it in there, no need to apply any pressure whatsoever. Make sure that it's lined up perfectly. Good. Now put this down. It goes under the screw. Put this forward. And then as you go down, the tab should go pop. And your CPU is now installed. Congratulations! Okay, now the memory sticks. This is even simpler. Well, yeah, I'd say so. Pull back the two straps, like so. 
Oh, these, these are mounted like that. So, okay, so you open your RAM package, remove the RAM, and notice these notches on the actual P uh, on the actual RAM slot. Line those up with the RAM. Stick the fixed fixed end. Stick in that end first, and just push down the RAM stick. Yeah, I was scared of breaking that first, but okay. Make sure that it clicks on both sides, and you are golden. And that's your RAM stick installed. So the second RAM stick. And when you have a situation like this on a motherboard, always remember to buy the kit that you're using. Use the correct kit. So I know that this motherboard supports dual channel RAM. So I buy dual channel RAM sticks. This allows for better performance and better because it's kind of like SLI. So it works together better. It communicate it communicates better. Sorry. And the same thing applies here. Push down on it, make sure that it clicks, and you are good to go. Okay, let's move on to the installation of the motherboard. Okay, guys, I realized I forgot to show you guys something. So, always be before you install your motherboard into your case, you should always test it if it boots or not. The fans are spinning, if they are, then it's all good. It's also a good idea to now pop up, pop out your Intel stock cooler as it is free and you can test the Intel CPU fan slot. So, pull it out, uh, you see the four pins. The Intel stock cooler is actually so easy to mount, and you just push. Okay, four clicks, all good. And now the CPU fan is the white one. So plug in the four pin. So I just plugged in the four pin, four pins fan header in here. Okay, now. Bust out your power supply. I should also mention that uh, some some motherboards also have a built on uh, built in uh, start button, but mine doesn't. So I'm gonna quickly get out my case and press the start button here. But the 24 pin goes in here. And the CPU, you always have to check your um, the some some connectors. You have a four pin here. Okay, so you plug in the four pins in the right way, and you should be good to go. Now I would quickly get my uh, PC case and press a button. So, so, <laughs> so, before you before you install your motherboard into your case, you need to check that your your front panel case buttons are working properly and that your motherboard boots. So, in the case that we have, we have clearly labeled reset and power switch okay this is a great time to refer back to your manual of your motherboard and check where the man where it says uh, the reset switch and power switch goes so on this motherboard the power switch goes second pin down so you get your power switch and realize that there is a positive and negative lead on the actual manual it doesn't matter as power switches work both ways. So you just plug it in whenever way you want. So the second pin down, 
I'll plug it in. Okay, that's good. Reset switch. <laughs> okay, never mind. It says reset switch. On the manual is on the other side. So you plug that in as well. And that's basically it. If you wish to test out your LED, uh, you, this time you actually need to check which way is positive and negative. So on this side, right under the power switch, we have the power LED. So this, these two separate things are power LED. This one says positive. Um, it decides to focus. That's alright, just trust me bros. This one says positive, this one says negative. You follow the manual, so the negative pin goes first. Goes in first, plug that baby in, and then the positive goes right after that. Okay, and for your hard drive LEDs, that thing that flashes and no one likes, well I don't like anyway, you check the positive and negative. So this one's, this edge is positive, the other edge is negative. You follow that in the manual and then you plug it in and make sure that your power supply is on. Press the button on your case. And voila. Good job, your system boots for the first time. Okay, so now we are going to install the motherboard inside our case. But first of all, since we're not going to use this crappy Intel stock cooler, we are going to remove it first. And that is off. And remember to clean off the excess um, thermal paste after you um, remove your cooler with some tissues and alcohol. So let's get the bag of mounting hardware up. Uh, okay. So in the mounting hardware, you will find brass golden looking standoffs uh, which look like this they are a hectagon I think yeah yeah he hectagon um, and since most people don't really have a hex key socket uh, they have kindly provided us with a adapter. It's a Phillips head to a hex key socket. So, you guys can see, but in the case, you have four holes. One here. One here. One here. One here and one here now before you screw anything in and I will admit that I have done this before you have to install your IO shield before you put your motherboard down so let's do that now Here's your IO shield with a little bit of foam padding on the back. You make sure that it's facing the right way because your motherboard goes down like that. Should go like that. So insert it at the back with some gentle presses. Doesn't take a lot of strength to insert this. Okay. So. it from the inside
do it from the inside. Press on the corners. Make sure that all the sides are clicked in properly because you don't want this falling out when you rage quit in your favorite game because you're bad. So <laughs> now you get your screwdriver and your adapter, put that on top of that and you screw in the standoffs. So insert that into here. Let's just rotate this so you guys can see. There we go. Finally. Okay. Now you can use a screwdriver and hand tighten them. The screwdriver. Don't go too tight because otherwise you're going to damage the threads and they become loose. Now that you have installed your standoffs here, 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 and here. Yeah, cut. Um, I forgot to install the um, water cooling hardware before I put in the motherboard. So, how do we do everything? Yay! This is now a good idea before you install your motherboard to install the back plate for your mounting hardware. So, for an LGA 1150, inside the H H55 pack, there is these mounts, and I will open them and show you shortly. First of all, for a plastic backplate, plastic backplate, peel the adhesive and stick it on both sides. Where they have the two large dots. Good. Now, to the other side. Just to get in place. Just like the other side. Good. Now I'll save this part for later. It is also a good idea to clear out your working space before you proceed further. Now, in the small packet, you will find small plastic caps these ones and also thinner ones like these these are the thick ones and these are the thinner ones the thinner ones go on the top and the thicker ones go on the bottom so now see this metal plate that you mount on top Prepare them by inserting these thick ones on the bottom and, this, and the larger ones on the top. So, you start by inserting the thinner one on top onto the slot itself first. Like so. Now, you insert the bottom piece with this type of end making sure that the thicker side faces towards inside of the circle you push it through make sure that you hear a click and that it's securely mounted without any wobbles when you shake it now you do the same to all four corners now that you have installed all four corners peel back the adhesive 
and identify the correct holes. On the edges of each hole, it marks your LGA number or your yeah or your LGA platforms. So for our build, we are doing socket LGA eleven fifty, and then push metal studs like this one through them from the outside in. LJ1150, push it in. Make sure that the metal stud completely goes inside. Take your time with this, as this may be difficult. Do the same, repeat the same process on the all four corners. Now that you have pushed all the metal studs, you can now insert it into your motherboard. Take out your motherboard, flip it on its back, and insert the metal studs into the holes. You may discover that the adhesive is touching the screw, therefore line it up a different way. Press down on the adhesive on both sides and make sure that the studs are through the other side. With the back plate installed, you can now insert the motherboard into the case. Now, use these screws with a hexagonal pattern on top and screw the motherboard down. You may need to apply some force on the other side so that the holes on the motherboard and the case line up. Make sure that you tighten them down, but not too tight. Repeat the same thing on the other three holes. Make sure that you don't untie the cables or unclip the cables on the Wi-Fi module. And now you're good. Now that you have installed your motherboard, it is now a good opportunity for you to install your CPU cooler. In my case, the Corsair H55. The thermal paste is pre-applied. So, Okay, I am terribly sorry, my phone actually ran out of memory on this video, so um, I can't really show you the CPU cooler install, but I'm sure you can look for other videos on YouTube, and I'll link one, link one in the description. Yeah, sorry guys, I, I'm filming on my iPhone. And uh, this is what it actually looks like after the um, CPU water block is installed, and um... I've also done the radiator and I'm sure someone on the internet will uh, show you how to do this and um, and I'll go through the fan installation because yeah we love fans okay so what I'm doing here is just explaining um, the way you have to position your fan uh, there's two arrows um, and I'll just put in a little picture now one shows the direction of the airflow and one shows the um, direction of the blades rotation and um, all I did was just screw it in it uh, uses the longest screws inside the packet and um, the front fan ended up being the cable of the front fan uh, didn't end up being long enough so I just used the um, Molex to 3 pin adapter that came with this case and I just plugged that in and um, on the side 90mm fan I just plugged that into the uh, motherboard because that's all the fan slots as you can see I plugged in the Molex to 3 pin fan connector and I am now connecting the 4 pin 
CPU power into the motherboard for a test boot. Now, a good trick to use if you don't want to plug in the power switch is to use a screwdriver and bridge the two pins. As you can hear and see, the fan is spinning and liquid is flowing through our H55. Now that you've done that, we can now leave the front panel alone. So we can snap that back on. And you're good to go. Actually, I don't quite like how this fan sounds. It's quite loud, but it's not long enough to reach anything else. So, um, basically what I did after that, I didn't do anything major. I just swapped out the fan because so the Corsair one was like a bit overpowered. So I swapped it back in with the um, fan that came with the case and that went very well and it just sounded a lot better. Now that I've fixed all my fan problems, I now plug in my 90mm side fan to a 4-pin Molex and the front intake and the pump is now controlled by the motherboard, which is which good, is good which, which means, means that, that it is too loud, I can turn it down, if the performance if is the not performance good, enough, is good enough. Now, before you install your power supply, it is now a good time to install your solder drives as it will get really cramped. So, to install an SSD or a 3.5 inch drive, find one of those hex screws that you have used before to install the motherboard. Put the rubber dampener with the wide, facing, wide face inside the screw and the narrower face at the tip of the screw at the end and screw on two edges on the bottom here and here now that you have these screws installed i recommend you face the solder drive on the rear of the case towards your motherboard as this will help you to do some cable management later so insert the round large holes into the bigger holes of the snowman kind of looking hole make sure that it is in in the actual hole okay now push forward congratulations you now mounted your first drive but before you do that, just so that you can <laughs> secure the drive even firmly, even firmer into your case, use these screws. They have a round top and a little bit of a wide pressure spreading thing. So use these. They are quite short. They are shorter than the ones you have mounted your motherboard with. And put these the holes you see them on the side of the cage actually I'll be back I'll have to remove this little cage plate thing where you can mount on additional drives so I'll just take it off Plate removed. Now, get the screws you have found before, and then screw it, and then screw it back in. Now you have securely mounted your SSD or hard drive. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just that I am installing the power supply. 
So I'm unplugging all the cables, the 24 pin and the 4 pin CPU power and I'm making sure that all the piping is out of the way, tugging in all the cables from behind and sliding in the power supply and I will now install the bracket. And now we saw the bracket using these hexagon screws that we use to install the motherboard with. And also make sure that when your bracket goes in, the top faces the top. So the four screws are now screwed on. The bracket is on the power supply. As you can probably see, the power supply is a bit short, so I'm going to move this bar backwards. But before I do that, I'm going to mount the bracket onto the case. So we use the same hexagonal mounting screws that we use to mount the bracket and the motherboard to screw in these brackets. These need to be a little bit tight as um, the power supply is probably the heaviest component in the entire system. Now, I'm going to remove the bar This bar is supposed to reinforce the frame so that the power supply doesn't just bounce around Okay, that's all good So now we are going to plug in all the cables should have plugged in the P uh, the CPU fan, but eh, we always make mistakes. Maybe not we, but I make mistakes. Here we go. So. On this cable, it's got a SATA, Molex, and a floppy drive thing. So, instead of using this one, I get to power my drive and power my fan in one cable. So, the rest can just be cable managed near here or here with tie downs. And I'll do that later. Okay, so I think we can all learn from our mistakes. So um, I forgot to plug in the CPU 4 pin and the power supply was then getting in the way. So now I have to remove the power supply and plug it back in and screw it back together again. So what I'm doing here is just plugging in all the front I.O. connectors like I did on the motherboard install. So now that I've plugged in all the front I.O. It is now time for me to most, do the most boring stuff in the whole universe and that is to cable management. But this is also the most crucial part because you want it to look good and have actually decent airflow. So uh, what I'm doing here is just cable managing. Um, I'm sure you can look for good tutorials on YouTube. Uh, I will suggest one down in the description below and you can watch that. There's different ways to do it, and this is just how I do it. Also, I forgot to plug in the graphics card. Obviously, I am done, so let's do that now. But as I said before, this card doesn't need any external power cables, so it's extremely easy to fit this inside the case. So, remove the safety strap thing, and then pull open the tab, and you put it in. Oh, there's cables in the way. There you go. Now that that's snapped in. 
screw in the two thumb screws. So, back to cable management. So I finished off all the cable management and I just closed back the case. Okay guys, so this is going to be my first boot. So, let's see how it does. Let's see if we get bias. And we do. So, that's a success. And I will see you after I install Windows. Okay guys, so um, I've installed Windows and also installed Primer 95, CVUZ and RealTemp. So I am ready to overclock. So I'll do a time lapse and I will come back with the results. So right now the Pentium is running at 2.3 GHz. And let's hope to push it all the way up to 4.2. So one whole GHz of goodness yeah okay so um the process took around like eight hours and um yeah i was really happy with the results because i i got like um 4.5 gigahertz in the end and that i kept the voltage on the 1.3 volts so that's gonna run pretty solidly I would say and um yeah so you can just see here like how many times I benchmarked this yeah so this is just a quick booting test it took a total of 17 seconds that's pretty good I would say hell yeah Okay guys, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button if you want more and you can order your own PC here and check out our Facebook page and why not check out another video? I made them myself. <laughs>